definitely a different woman than I was August 2020 when I first started the program. Hey everyone and welcome back to another video and happy new year! I know 2020 was a hard year, so I'm glad to see that everyone has made it to 2021, even though we have no clue what 2021 has in store, but I want to speak positivity because this is going to be a great year. So in this video, I will be giving you guys a wrap up of how my semester ended. And also at the end of the video, I will be giving you guys my goals for this semester. So if you're new to my channel, hi, I'm Nandria. Sorry, I didn't mention that before, but make sure to hit that subscribe button so you can keep up with my grad school updates and also my other videos that I have on my channel. Okay, so just as a summary, I am a developmental psychology PhD student at Florida State University. And last semester, I took three classes. I took a developmental psychology class, a policy issues and reading class, and ANOVA, which is basically a statistics class. So my semester ended with two A's and a B plus, giving me a 3.75 GPA. Yep, I'm gonna be completely upfront and transparent with you guys. My original goal was a 4.0, but it's okay because it was a very rough semester. In addition to passing my classes, I submitted to two conferences and got accepted to one. I'm still waiting on the um, acceptance for another one. And then in addition to those two conferences, I also started a paper, which this semester I'm hoping to be able to finish. So that is all the academic stuff that I have done last semester. So outside of my personal academics, I was a reviewer for the undergraduate research conference. And that is basically students submit abstracts and research proposals that if they get accepted, they then have a poster and they present at the undergraduate research conference. So I was a reviewer for that. And then also, um, what else did I do? I was a SONA administrator. That I really and truly don't really know how to describe it, but it's basically where everyone that is a psychology major or is in a psychology class and wants to receive research credit, they go there to come participate in research studies and they get extra credit. I helped with, um, what, what are they called? You guys, sorry, words are escaping me today. But I also helped with um, getting students' personal statements ready. So they would write their personal statement for whether it was grad school, med school, um, what else did I get? Just like other after graduation stuff, so I helped them get their personal statement ready for that. Oh, I I I don't think you can see her. She's like right underneath me. I adopted a dog. <laughs> so now I'm a dog mom, but my dog is an emotional support animal, so I was recommended to get one by my therapist, and that's why I got it. Also, I started doing therapy again. So that's all of the outside stuff that I did. And I will tell you guys straight up front, grad school, well, at least my first semester, I should say was nothing at all like what I expected. I was definitely prepared for the workload. Like I was told that the workload is very different in grad school than it is in undergrad, but I still was not prepared for like the culmination of everything. Like grad school, outside of grad school, personal life, all of that stuff kind of just like bulged into one and I was swamped. Also with the fact that I moved to Florida from New York during a pandemic and only a day, a week before classes started, did not put me off on the right foot that I wanted. So there was a lot of ups and downs. There was, I literally failed my midterm for my, well the first time around I failed my midterm for my Nova class, but then we, my professor and I, we went through it and realized that some things just were not my fault that went wrong so I got some points back but like stuff like that was just like throwing me curveballs and like some days I would feel like I have so much time and other days I would feel like I have no time at all so it was just a very learn as you go kind of experience and I don't know if I completely learned everything because I just know that every semester is going to be different based off like the conversations that I've had with the girls in my lab and also like some talk that I've had with other professors when they reminisce on their PhD journey. It's gonna be like that until I graduate, basically. I can say that I definitely have grown as a person, 
because of all the things that I have experienced last semester in addition to like grad school and all that stuff like actually being an adult like this was the first time I had to pay rent I had to I got a car for my graduation gift so this was the first time I actually had to like manage my car my car is old so like it does need a good amount of work on it so all of that stuff was just like it helped me really find out what's important, what I need to prioritize, and like certain things that I was just doing for pleasure because I didn't have anything else to do that really did not need to get done. When it comes to my classes, I think I learned more about myself than the material that I was supposed to learn. And by that, I mean, let's take my developmental psychology class, for example. The classes were broken down that one week we would study like language development, the next week we would study math development, the next week we would study like social development. But I feel like I learned more about myself than I actually did about children and how they develop throughout the timeline, if that makes sense. So a lot of the times I would be reading papers and basically like reflecting on like my life or like people that I know. And then a lot of the conversations that we had in class kind of like deviated from the topic sometimes and we would cover like different things like twin development or um, the reason why we have the friends that we do. So that was kind of fun in the fact that it's very different from your traditional class because it's very heavy discussion based. And because of that, the conversation can literally go anywhere. But I also love that my professor gave us the opportunity to actually talk and like be like, hey, I wonder if this is related to something out there that I found out about a week ago and would like to talk about. Like, she was very welcoming to the fact that you can actually just talk about anything as long as you're talking, basically. And then also in my issues, in my policy issues in reading class, I did learn about a lot of policy issues when it comes to like reading in classrooms and like policy when it comes to reading but also it helps me to like figure out what I want to do with my life so when I originally came into my PhD program I wanted to go into education policy so that is why my advisor kind of recommended this class like hey get your feet wet and see if this is something that you're really interested in and it helped me realize that I would hate a job like that, but I feel like it's necessary for me to be in a job like that if it makes sense. So now I'm just trying to see if I can find a good place where those to me so the classes were definitely more than just classes i feel like they were very reflected for me at least i'm speaking on my experiences so that's kind of what i loved about it and especially because you guys when i tell you grad school is different than undergrad like it really is very different from undergrad like i was surprised when i got the a's because i'm just like really <laughs> little me no because my policy and issues class like i would have to meet with her all the every not all the time but like very often like at least once a month and i'm just like girl i have no clue what's going on in here like help me out here and i had to like redo some assignments because i just felt like this was not the work that i felt like i could put out but she was like at the end of the semester she emailed me and was like i saw the growth in the class and i'm like you saw growth I didn't see growth, but if you saw it, we can go with that one. So that's what I'm saying, like, it's very different. Like, you're learning and you're maturing without even really knowing it. Because now that I'm actually making this video and talking about the things that I've learned and experienced while going through that semester, this is definitely a different woman than I was August 2020 when I first started the program. So this semester, I only have two classes. Last semester I had three classes, this semester I have two classes. So the norm is that you take a max of three classes in grad school, and even though there's three credits, you guys, don't let the three credits fool you. They take up a lot of time. But yeah, so I have two classes this semester, which is my regression class, which is another statistics class. This one is taught by my advisor, which I'm very excited about. And then another class in the College of Education. Hmm, I forgot the name of it, but it's basically helping you to read research articles deeper and understand implications in education. I can't remember the specific title of the class, but yeah. So my class schedule is basically Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and, or Monday, Thursday, Friday. It's either Monday, Thursday, Friday, or Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, one of them. And they're three hour classes, except for the one on Friday. I think it's a lab, which is an hour. 
and all my classes will be online again so my goal for this semester is to get all A's I have one less class so I feel like I can have a bit more time to actually put into my work and now that I understand the different way of studying for a statistics class I can apply that to this and also the fact that my statistics class is taught about my advisor I feel like I can cheat some office hours like, hey, can we meet and discuss about X, Y, and Z, you know? So I feel like I definitely should be able to get an A in that class because if she's if she teaches any way she advises, she's a, she's a phenomenal teacher because she really breaks it down when she's like having our one-on-one -on -one meetings, but then again, that's one-on-one, -on -one, so we'll see. Also, I want to, not perfect, because no one can really be perfect, but I want to better manage my time. So last semester, I did schedule out my time so that I had blocks where I knew I would be doing work, checking emails, going to the gym, all that stuff. But because my schedule was never consistent, I was never consistent with keeping the schedule. So I'm hoping that I can figure out by like week two or three how the days are going to go and use that to be very consistent with the time. because. The weeks where I was not consistent with my time were the weeks I was most stressed. And this is not the time to be stressed, especially because they got rid of spring break. So we have 14 weeks straight of classes. I definitely cannot afford to be stressed anymore. Like, absolutely not. No, no ma'am. And then on top of that, I'm hoping to be a better adult. <laughs> And I know that sounds weird, but like I said, last semester was the first time I really had to like be an adult. So I was recklessly spending, um, I probably grocery shopped three times, not gonna lie, cause the rest of the times I was just eating out, so that goes back to recklessly spending. And then also, sometimes I just neglected things because I didn't want to do it and didn't want to spend money. And that's not proper adulting, you guys. Don't be like me. Be smart, be responsible, don't be like me. So this semester, I'm really trying to like set up a budget. I have my handy dandy iPad, which I have a template on the No Shelf app that I use, and I will create a budget where I can put in my rent, my utilities, um, budget for Sienna, cause she's an expensive dog, you guys, like. Um, and just all that stuff and just stick to the budget like I'm not even kidding you guys after my birthday I had $20 left on my card and that was yeah that was rough that was rough also another goal of mine is to actually become more social last semester I stayed in the house like I was literally in the house like six days out of the week and then the one day I did go outside of the house I was outside for like three hours and I just went to class and then went back home so I'm hoping that this semester I can actually force myself to go out also now that I'm 21 I can actually do fun stuff I can't I don't have to just go eat breakfast or go to the park but I can actually like go to restaurants and stuff so I, I did make friends I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie I did make friends last semester but they were all 21 and over so when they wanted to hang out like I couldn't or like I could but I didn't want to be that one person who was like under 21 so now I'm going to be saying yes to a lot of hey you want to go out yes Granted, I finished my work because school comes first, but I just want to be more social because having grad school as the sole thing in my life is very depressing. Like, wake up, school, gym bed, wake up, school, gym bed, wake up, school. like, that's so, like, you need something, like, I, I know a lot of people say you need something outside of school to do, but it's so important that you have something outside of school to get your mind off school because if you're constantly focused on like when's the next paper when's the next assignment da, 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 you're gonna burn yourself out and like when you reflect on grad school all you did was work yeah you didn't have fun you didn't really make memories all you did was work so those are really my top three or four goals all a's better time management budget be more social yeah those are my top four goals I don't really have anything else or if I do I probably just 
say hey I want to do this I'm very excited for this semester and if you have made it this far in the video comment down below your goals for 2020 or your goals for school doesn't matter and we can cheer each other on so thank you guys so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one bye